Um, oh, I'd now yeah. like to bring to the uh, to the speaker our second speaker, um, Haley Russell. Thanks, Haley. Go ahead. Thanks, Vanessa. I'll just um, I hope the camera's on me at the moment. Um, I can't quite see it, but that's okay. So thank you so much, Gemma, to, for that presentation because there was so much in a, in a short amount of time. Um, and we actually um, will speak about some of the similar things and talk about some of the same um, authors as well, which is great. So we hear a lot when we're answering calls uh, on the support line about fear of recurrence. And then something else that I talk a lot to women about is going through an objectively really difficult thing like a cancer diagnosis or treatment all the time afterwards and then those messages in our heads which Gemma has just spoken about which is not only is this really difficult but I'm also doing it wrong and all the shoulds that come into our mind, um, those voices that say I've got to stop wallowing, I've got to stop feeling sorry for myself or I'm, I'm being weak and that's what I want to address today, is how do we actually nurture instead some self-care and self-compassion um, for yourself as you're going through treatment. So, what is self-compassion? So, if we think of that inner critic again, what can happen when we think about um, a situation and we start to criticise ourselves is that we go very quickly from this situation is bad um, to... I am bad myself and the way I'm coping with it is not okay. So an alternative to that is to think of ourselves with warmth and forgiveness instead. Um, the other way I put it sometimes, um, and it was mentioned just before, is treating yourself as you would uh, a beloved family member or a friend. Um, and another way I speak about it is, and stick with me because it might sound a little bit strange at, at first, but treating yourself like you would a little child. So. Um, if we see a toddler who's really distressed, who's having a tantrum, we rarely say, okay, come on, you've really got to pull up your socks. You've got to, you know, act differently today. What we usually do is we have, we get really curious and we say, okay, well, this child's struggling. Do they need, are they hungry? Do they need a sleep? Do they need, just need a hug? Do they need to be held? Um, do they need some distraction? We get really curious and really compassionate about that child. Um, so, again, encouraging that similar kind of view of ourselves as well. Um, and really giving yourself credit where credit is due and setting um, goal posts for yourself that are realistic. Often women say, um, I can't do anywhere near the kind of things that I could before cancer treatment. I really expected to be able to get back to that and saying, well, maybe there are days where actually, in fact, um, a really big achievement is going to be, you know, I made myself a healthy lunch and I walked around the block and giving ourselves credit for those things that um, we do achieve. The really good thing about um, self-compassion as well now is that if they're starting to get um, some emerging evidence um, that it can actually affect the way that we um, are in terms of decreasing cortisol, which is the chemical that we produce when we're stressed, um, and also increasing heart rate variability, which is to do with our ability to self-soothe ourselves. So there's there's more um, research emerging. And a lot of the things that I'll speak about uh, is research by a woman called Kristen Neff, uh, and you can see a lot of her stuff on selfcompassion.org. So to go a little bit more deeply into how we actually um, talk to ourselves kindly and nurture self-compassion and practice self-compassion. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about someone that's already been mentioned today, which is Raf Harris. Again, the happiness trap, a lot of his stuff is on his website as well. But he talks about how we can build self-compassion, the building blocks of self-compassion. Um, and these are not necessarily something that have to go in order. They're just thoughts to think about that might help you when you're thinking of um, treating yourself in a self-compassionate way. So the first one there, just acknowledging your pain. And again, might sound obvious, but how often do we try to push things away or push them down or bottle them up and say, nope, not feeling that, not allowed to feel that, not going to feel that today. So instead, just saying, okay, I'm feeling a lot of stress come up. I'm feeling a lot of anxiety come up. That could be because my scan's next week. Or 
I'm feeling grief because this cancer treatment means that I'm not um, going to be able to take part in something I really want to uh, in a couple of months. Or I'm feeling fear because I'm really worried about my, my cancer progressing. So just acknowledging those rather than drowning them out because that can give us the message that we're not allowed to feel certain things, that some, some uh, emotions are not allowed to be felt. So as well as acknowledging the pain, when we start to acknowledge the pain, often um, we can go really quickly to the judgment of it. So uh, I'm feeling sad about the event, but that's just stupid. It's just a birthday party. What am, what am I talking about? Um, you know, you sh I should be stronger than that. I should just be able to, to deal with this or I'm only allowed to think positively. Look, I'm thinking negatively again. So that judgment comes in really strongly. So thinking about diffusing that by just observing that that's there. Okay, that little judgy voice is coming up again. It's there. It's a viewpoint. It's not necessarily the objective truth. It's just a, a, a thought that's coming into my mind at this moment. If we, if we give it too much credit, that voice, what can happen is that we can go a bit further into that cycle of self-judgment, which we which you want to avoid. So just observing that that, that judgment is there and not um, connecting in with it too much um, can be good. And then can we act with kindness towards ourselves? So, so many women I speak to, most compassionate people you could possibly imagine to everyone else around them, they would say that kindness is amongst one of their highest values, but so difficult to switch that and then apply it to themselves. So, Practicing in that moment, kind self-talk. So what would it be like to say to yourself, well, that's a really understandable feeling given everything that I'm going through. Or it's okay to feel whatever I'm feeling in this moment. So practicing that kind of self-talk. Um, and in a minute, I'll cover some other acts of, actual acts of self-care that we can do for ourselves, which give us that same message of self-compassion. Um, so then just going on to a couple more building blocks um, that Rap Harris speaks about. So acceptance of feelings, and this goes back a little bit to what Gemma was speaking about, that, you know, we would, um, that feeling of, uh, I really, I just want to block it out. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to um, go anywhere near it. But uh, again, that can sort of, they come up, don't they? And sometimes I describe it like a beach ball, the beach, you try to shove it under the water and eventually it just back, back in back in your face. So it's the idea that if we accept them, and if we allow, allow them to sort of flow through us, then actually we notice that, okay, maybe I felt a bit different towards the end of the day. Maybe that eased a little bit, something else came in, um, another feeling came in and we allow them to um, shift and change um, and that very often those feelings aren't permanent or the final feeling that we'll feel. And this is probably the time where I'll um, reiterate the message that if these are feelings which feel really overwhelming, if they're stopping you, you know, completely from living life, if they're affecting your sleep um, or if you're feeling really low mood or high levels of anxiety, always good to get in to your GP and to the rest of your medical team to seek further advice. But these are... Um, Yes, in those kind of more um, extreme situations. So going back to the building blocks, validation. Validation that it's okay to feel what we're feeling. Um, so that, that, that um, sentence in our head sometimes, which is, you know, okay, it's difficult, but what are you complaining about? Because, you know, that some other people have it so much worse and, you know, you, um, imagine, imagine other people who are struggling, which is objectively true but not really helpful um, often because it can invalidate the way that you're feeling. No one knows your own feelings or your own pain and there's no hierarchy in this kind of thing. There's no, okay, well, um, she is feeling it more than me. Um, so it's important to validate and say, okay, actually I can, um, I'm allowed to feel these things. And then finally, connectedness. Connecting with other people who love you can really help us with our kind self-talk because they're usually... Um, saying hopefully a lot of good and affirming things. They can remind us of our strengths um, and they can remind us um, of, of how loved we are and they can really support that, that kind self-talk. 
And I'll just finish this little part with um, a quote from these, um, this, uh, these building blocks of self-compassion, which is that your pain is not a sign of weakness. It is, it's a sign you are a living, caring human being. So moving on now to self-care. So self-care and passion is the attitude that we're trying to take to each other and take to ourselves. Um, and what we're trying to nurture. Acts of self-care can be things that we actually do to take care of ourselves. Um, now, there's no prescription I can give for this. I can't say everyone go take a bubble bath because half of you will say that I hate that bath, they're disgusting. Or, um, so there's no, there's no prescription I can give. But we can ask ourselves the question, what comforts, sustains and recharges me? That starts to give you clues about the things that you do that really help. So. For some people, it is spending time with loved ones. Um, for some people, it's uh, exercise. You know, there's lots of biological reasons why exercise is good, especially outdoors, if you can. For some people, it's expressing themselves creatively. So ask yourself that question. Notice when an act of self-care has helped and take note of it and say, well, how can I do more of that in my life? And on screen now is just um, a few different ways. It doesn't look too great, but again, this um, comes back to the mindfulness aspects as well. Ways to take a break, but also just to notice, to be mindful in the moment, to notice your body as well. And you can find this if you Google 50 ways to take a break. It's a really lovely one to print out and put on the fridge or put on the notice board. So what I might finish with is just um, a brief self-compassion meditation. So again, the um, researcher and psychologist that I mentioned, Kristen Neff, on selfcompassion.org, there's a lot of meditations like this, uh, which you can listen to, guided self-meditations um, on self-compassion. Um, but what I've cobbled together is a combination of a few different resources that will just take us a minute to go through and might give you a little bit of a tool that you can use in moments um, of distress or anxiety. Um, so if you do feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. I won't be able to tell if you do or don't, so um, that's fine. And just um, try and get yourself comfortable in your seat or wherever you are at the moment. Give yourself a moment to be still. So the intention of this meditation is to take you through how to identify and have insight in moments of distress and how to respond with self-compassion. So when you're ready, maybe you could call to mind a moment that has been tough in your ovarian cancer experience. So maybe one of the examples we were talking about earlier, anxiety around the scan, um, you know, struggling with fatigue, so we want to bring that to mind and absorb, uh, observe ourselves in that moment. And can we gently say to ourselves, this is a moment of suffering. So that's the mindfulness part. Just acknowledging this hurts, this is stress, or I'm feeling anxious, giving some words to it, ouch. This is, this is tough today. And the next part is about telling ourselves that difficult times are a part of being human, that it's common to everyone in humanity, even though our pain is different, but it's common to everyone who is a human. And therefore, we're not alone in the way that we feel. Other ways to think of it is what I'm feeling is really understandable given my current situation. Now, as you start to bring these things to mind, perhaps put your hand over your heart and feel the warmth of your hand and the gentle touch of your hand on your chest. Or you might want to adopt some other form of soothing touch. So for some people that might be um, just gently stroking their arm or gently massaging their jaw or neck. Just connecting with yourself in a, in a compassionate way. 
And as you do that, can you say to yourself, may I be kind to myself? You might also ask yourself, what do I need to hear right now that expresses kindness to myself? There might be a special phrase for you which really speaks to you in your particular situation. But for the next 30 seconds or so, I'll just go through a few, a few options that might ring true. May I give myself the compassion that I need? May I be peaceful? I have negotiated every other bad day or obstacle that life has thrown my way. I am aware that I deserve unconditional love and compassion. May I be loving, kind and compassionate towards myself. I'm aware that as a human being, I'm fallible. May I be patient and understanding with myself. I will recognise my own successes and will not feel guilt, shame or remorse over my more difficult days. I'm aware that there's a reason for each of my emotions. May I gently look at the sources of my painful emotions. May I always remember that I deserve love and compassion from myself. Just as other people are deserving of peace, love and happiness, so am I. So this practice that we've just done can be used any time of the day or night um, and is, can be, really be used to help to remember to evoke the major aspects of self-compassion when you need it the most. So feel free to open your eyes and come back in to this room where you are at the moment when you're ready. That's about all that I have for you and I'll hand back to Vanessa for any questions. Thank you so much, Hayley, for touching on so many important areas and, and for reminding us just how important self-compassion and self-care is. Um, we do have a question. Uh, someone's written, my mind races at night. That's when I worry the most and it keeps me awake. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any tips to help me switch off and, and help me get to sleep? Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's it's such a common time, isn't it? You know, we may be distracted during the day. We may be doing things and when we go to bed at night, all of a sudden it all rushes in, in that way, in that moment. So there's a lot of great tips um, for sleep that are available. I think it's really important to look at um, what we call your sleep hygiene. So what are you doing in the time leading up to bed? Um, and trying to make sure that you do things like um, switching off technology, having a little bit of a routine to do things that are calming. Um, you know, for some people that's um, your chamomile tea, that's taking a, a warm bath or a shower, so getting a little routine set up so that um, you're telling your body, okay, it's time to sleep, it's actually not time um, to, to worry at this, at this moment. Um, some people find uh, useful something called, um, you know, making a time for worry, so saying, okay, there's things that I need to think about, but actually maybe it's best that I think about them tomorrow, you might even write some of them down and then giving yourself a time the next day, just 10 minutes to say, all right, I can worry on them now um, and giving yourself, so sort of delaying that to a time where it's actually going to be more useful to think about these kind of things. Um, and I think going back um, to what Gemma was speaking about as well um, previously, so just really noticing when you get in that cycle um, and trying to do some circuit breakers to um, say, is this really helpful? So you ch actually, in that moment, ch challenging your unhelpful helpful thinking and saying, is it helpful to be um, ruminating or um, thinking over and over on exactly what the doctor said? Or, um, you know, is that helpful in this moment is, is sort of the, um, the thought. So those are some ideas. Great. Thanks. Great advice, Hayley. Thank you very much again for joining us on this webinar.